Rajiv sir, good evening sir. Rajiv sir, are you able to hear us? Good evening sir. Sir, we are unable to hear you. Rajiv sir is from Hindu Rao Hospital, New Delhi. Patta had recently put up a nice photograph with NR and uh, with Chandra Mohan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, well, I think within last few days only, I also saw that yeah. thing in the FB, sir. So I'm the only living person for three, really. I mean, that's a very memorable picture, I should say. We have uh, Professor Jailal joining in. Uh, Jailal, sir, good evening, sir. Jailal, sir, good evening. I think uh, we have uh, Morning, sir. time. We start. Uh, uh, good evening. Jailal, sir, are you able to hear us? Yes, yes. Sorry. I'm yes. just good, sir. Good, good, good. Okay. Jailal. It's fine. I'm sorry, sir. I have to. Uh, I, yeah, can I have we'll the permission ahead. of starting the session, sir? It's 8 o'clock. Please, please. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Good evening, friends, uh, senior professors, uh, our uh, invited faculty for the day, uh, our teacher of teachers, our mentor, Professor Ananda Krishnan, sir, who is the dean of research from the Mahatma Gandhi Medical College, and he served very long time in the Chipmer, educating generation after generation of uh, professors and head of the departments. Thank you, sir, for joining us today. Uh, we have uh, the most famous uh, surgical gastroenterologist of the globe, Pata sir. Uh, he's very popular for the learning general surgery and now it has become let us learn surgery, who has more than 40,000 surgeons under his, uh, uh, say what to say, uh, the people continue to learn and enjoy learning on his platform on various surgical issues. And uh, he teaches surgery and uh, associated uh, social things of surgery as well and it's been a very honest critic of whatever he feels and uh, he feels he shares with us thank you sir and uh, we have uh, our good friend and uh, current uh, head of the department of Vellu medical college professor raj velu sir again a very eminent teacher we met very recently last week also and has been kind to travel all the way from uh, Vellur for a academic program at the asa auditorium at uh, chennai thank you sir and uh, we expect uh, Professor Birapa to join shortly. And uh, we have our uh, the Commonwealth Secretary General, Professor Jailal, and he also is the head of the department uh, from Kanyakumari Medical College, who's been with us for the past uh, three years almost. And uh, Professor Karnakaran sir, Professor Karnakaran sir is from Madurai Medical College, and um, Professor Rajiv Sahai sir from uh, Delhi. And we have a Professor Sri Hari Rao, sir, from Swims Hospital, Hyderabad. And I also wish a very good evening to all the people who have joined in the YouTube. And we have two brilliant postgraduates. Uh, one is uh, Vinay. Vinay is kindly contributed by Professor Raj Gopal Chennai from Kasturba Medical College. And uh, uh, we have Gautam. Gautam is from uh, Madras Medical College Institute of General Surgery, kindly contributed by Professor P. S. Shanti. So, um, now, I uh, request the students to take a call. Uh, Gautam or uh, Vinay, who wants to take it first? I'll go first. Gautam, fantastic. So, Gautam, uh, can you please introduce yourself? You are uh, a tell about your assistant professors, your unit chief, and the head of the department. Start your presentation. Faculty, a kind reminder. Uh, the student uh, will be allowed to present the history part without stopping. At the stop of the history, end of the history, he, the slides can be revisited from one, two, three, so that you can give your comments or ask questions or whatever you would like to add upon. And then uh, same way, during the clinical presentation, he is allowed to present in a whole. And once he arrives at the diagnosis, you can visit all the slides again to ask questions. And then we have one hour for each case. So the initial part can be related to this patient, investigations and management, and definitely you can take him further depending upon 
his expertise in it. And I request if the candidate struggles to give an answer or something, I request the teachers to give the answer what they are expecting out of the student. So then we keep moving further so that the discussion goes, rolls upon. So this is my humble request. And uh, we have our own faculty who has been with this journey for the past three years, who also can chip in to give their comments and questions. So I wish both the students well, and uh, I request Gautam to start his presentation. Thank you very much. And friends, I should share something very important. We have now crossed uh, 12,100 subscribers for the PG clinics. So that is a recent achievement. The earlier one was uh, close to 4 lakh views. And uh, this week, we have crossed 12,000 subscribers for the program. Thank you, all the faculty who are contributing for the last three years. And uh, thank you, all the dear students who have been working towards this. Thank you very much. Gautam, stage is yours. Good luck to you. Thank you. Sir, myself, I'm Dr. Gautam, a final year postgraduate from Madras Medical College. My chief is uh, Professor P. S. Shanti Ma'am, uh, Director of uh, Institute of General Surgery. My assistant professors are uh, Dr. Kamal Raj, uh, Dr. Vikas, Dr. Kudiyarasu, and uh, Dr. Rajeshwari. And uh, I, I sincerely thank uh, Dr. Kanagavil sir for uh, giving this opportunity, and I'd like to start my presentation. A 60-year-old gentleman hailing from Ranipet, former by occupation, belonging to low socioeconomic class, presented with complaints of pain in the right lower abdomen for the past one month. As you are presenting, the patient was apparently normal one month back when he developed pain in the right lower abdomen of one, one month duration. Incidence in onset, continuous, dull aching type of pain, localized to the right abdomen, and it was gradually progressive. There was no migrating or radiating or referred elsewhere. No specific aggravating factors. It was relieved with analgesics. History of uh, Marina present, eight episodes for the last 15 days. History of uh, loss of appetite and history of unintentional weight loss is there. Uh, the patient also complains of a history of easy fatigue levity. There was no history of vomiting, abdominal distension, or halted blood, uh, bowel habits. There was no history of fever or cough with uh, protective sputum. No history of hemoptasis, shortness of breath. There was no history of yellowish discoloration of skin or sclera. There was no uh, history of disturbances in immigration. Uh, there was no history of comorbid illness. Past history, uh, there was no similar complaints in the past. No history of prior hospitalization. No history of past surgeries. No history of uh, treatment for tuberculosis or contact with tuberculosis. Personal history, the patient consumes a uh, non-vegetarian diet, no, uh, has no, normal bowel uh, bladder habits. Bowel, uh, he had uh, complaints of uh, melina for the past two weeks. Normal sleep pattern. There is no, uh, he's not a smoker uh, and he doesn't consume alcohol or uh, uses tobacco. Family history. There is no history of uh, malignancy running in the family or a history of tuberculosis in the family members. To summarize my history, a 63 year old gentleman with no comorbid illness and not a smoker and an alcoholic presented with pain in the right lower abdomen for one month, melina for 15 days, associated with loss of weight, loss of appetite, and easy particular pain. Can you go to the first slide? Okay, next. Uh, just a minute, Rajavir, sir. Uh, Gautam, yeah, yeah. How, do you, how do you come to the conclusion he is a low socioeconomic class? First slide. Sir, uh, what criteria or what scale you used? Sir, uh, uh, based on uh, education, uh, earning, income, Of whom? Uh, of the patients. So, a patient, if you is a, not a head of the family, you still depend upon him? No, he's 62 years. Sir is asking, is, is the family dependent on him? Yes, sir. Uh, he, uh, he has uh, only uh, one child, uh, one, uh, one son, which, uh, which has moved away from the family. So there's only husband and wife. So you have asked all those details and come to the conclusion of that lawyer. So uh, how many scales you have? Is it uh, only three, three uh, scales or five scales? Three scales. So you are aware of modified Kupasami scale? I'm okay. Not. Okay. Second. Okay. So you said incidence is an onset, continuous dull aching. Okay. What is this relieved with the analgesics? Uh, he has uh, been. Uh, he has uh, seen a, a local physician uh, in the past one month. Sir. 
he was prescribed some uh, tablet for pain and uh, he has taken that and he has relieved uh, pain sir you you have mentioned is a continuous pain no yes, aggravative sir. factor no sir it was pain what is relieving that sir uh, he is a dull pain uh, when, uh, uh, after taking medications it is relieved sir but after uh, some time it is uh, it is uh, pain is back sir so is it a continuous pain Uh, without any medication, the uh, pain is continuous, sir. Okay. Usually, uh, if it is a muscular pain, fine, it will be continuous. Or if it is a intestinal, you don't get uh, that continuous pain. You have it intermittent. Okay. okay. And uh, even in your uh, statement, you have not mentioned what medicines they took. You uh, assume that it is analgesics. Okay. We'll go ahead. Next. I, I think whenever you talk about melina, immediately you must uh, go for uh, uh, vomiting and hematemesis at the first instance. That you you have said it at the at late, and I always believe this appetite, weight loss, everything should be at the last. And uh, have you mentioned about jaundice? Yes, sir. The next. Hello, is discoloration. Okay, next. But for, from the beginning, it seems that uh, you are thinking it is a chronic pain. A patient Chronic. has come to you with the pain in a surgical OP with a pain abdomen. What other features you will be immediately asking? The fever should come at the end or it should come at the earlier? What is the triad you get? Pain, vomiting, fever, and is there is any Murphy, significant on that? Uh, Murphy's triad said uh, uh, the patient has acute pain and uh, there is a short duration. Uh, patient complains of one week, uh, one month duration, sir. Uh, if it had been an acute uh, pain, uh, it would have been more important uh, to ask for a fever at the first. Uh, what is the duration in this? A uh, one-month duration, sir. And what is it? Is it acute or subacute or chronic or? Sir, it is uh, subacute, sir. It's not uh, more than six weeks. Sir. Yeah, so you cannot uh, take it as chronic. But your presentation looks as if you are thinking in terms of chronic conditions. So chronic. So it is better when you have a patient who has a complaints of only pain, which is a vet. Relieved by drug again, it is coming. So it is a something is continuing the pain. So you will yes, not sir. think any what chronic condition you think which continuously the pain will be persisting for one month. So far, dull aching one month, relieving with some medications is, is look some something related to an inflammatory process. But Next. your your option is thinking something else. Do you think any chronic condition which will have a continuous one month pain? Sir, uh, if uh, if there is a altered bowel habits, uh, we may think of inflammatory bowel disease or uh, uh, alternate diarrhea. Uh, there is no need for inflammatory bowel disease to have a fever. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. And uh, one more, I have seen that you said melina. Then you are saying there is no altered bowel habit. What is that? What is that? How do you explain? Sir, uh, he doesn't have Elena, any... Is uh, also your altered bowel habit or not? Is it a normal bowel habit? No, sir. Uh, if, uh, apart from uh, Melina, he doesn't have any con history of constipation or di uh, alternating diarrhea. Sir. Then you make that statement. Look, please remember uh, that is an alternating bowel habit. If somebody has a diarrhea, then go for a constipation. But altered bowel habits include melina is a very significant uh, altered bowel habit. And you are expecting it a lower bowel. And uh, still you are expecting a melina. And how do you explain that? Yes. Yeah. We'll come to that later. Okay, we'll come to that later. Okay. Go ahead. Next. Next. The important is no some nothing similar complaints in the past, so you cannot think of a chronic condition according chronic to your history. According to your history, okay. Next. Oh, okay. Next. Except for Melina, it's nothing. Family is fine. Next. So with this, okay. You think of. You think of. Uh, sir. Uh, the. I'm thinking in terms of uh, an old age uh, man with a uh, short history of uh, uh, abdominal pain. Uh, 
uh, with history of uh, melina uh, loss of weight and appetite uh, might be a malignancy or a chronic uh, pathology so why do you think of malignancy at the first instance except for the age what else uh, melina loss of weight and loss of appetite also is uh, there sir but it is not very, uh, it, it, it does not directly point out towards malignancy but uh, uh, the giving uh, predominant uh, importance to the age and thinking of malignancy sir. in one month you come to the conclusion of loss of weight how much sir i yes. he is uh, not able to document the exact uh, uh, weight sir but he says that uh, his shirt has become loose and uh, the patient is not able to establish then how do you establish and say there is loss of weight sir uh, i asked the history of uh, whether his uh, shirts uh, have become uh, loose uh and i asked the attendant whether uh, he looks a uh, bit uh... Mm, dr gautam your patient has been unwell since one one month just one Last month, one month. Yes, he was okay be- absolutely okay before that yes sir no issues no sir. no many so why do you think of malignancy then just one month our malignancies are, unless it's very aggressive then he would have had thing but other problems also. think of common things in any predisposing factors for malignancy any potentiating factors is there present the patient no sir uh, what are the factors you think can precipitate malignancy or i mean it is a potential factors for malignancy sir uh, if there is a familial history uh, one sir uh, then uh, no, the this patient is the, has this is 62 that. years old individual And, and how do you elicit the family history for this is it a significant for a 62 years old no, individual no sir no, it's not significant sir it will be from the from the age of uh, 20 years at least uh, he would have had any symptoms this, suppose his first degree relative somebody has a malignancy at less than 50 years then it is significant significant okay so uh, family history is one anything else sir uh, he has been a uh, smoker alcoholic uh, it might be a risk factor sir and uh, dietary habits uh, would have been the next risk factor sir is a common with you in any inflammatory bowel disease gautam i have two questions question one is how common is malina in a right sided malignancies and two how common is pain in a in a colonic tumor and if it's there is pain what could the cause what are the causes of pain if there is right sided colonic masses sir uh, uh, the uh, pay, uh, usually pain might be there in terms of a uh, partial obstruction sir or uh, so patient has any distance bowel distance in the way partial obstruction sir, sir i'm not able to hear No, from your uh, history there doesn't seem to be any obstruction no, sir, uh, obstruction right partial obstruction is one and then more commonly it is pain but uh, you must should infiltrate some infiltrate the nerve if it is no. not within the lumen it is outside the lumen outside right so how common is bleeding rather how common is malina in a right sided uh, what is the commonest presentation of right said colonic masses the uh, patient uh, present with anemia anemic anemia sir so these two Bleeding. things are the only things you have uh, in your hand and with these uh, you know uncommon symptoms you would still consider malignancy as a first diagnosis it, it, if you think it's a bleeding from the right sided colon how do you get the melina sir i if uh, if they had it had been uh, the transit time is more, uh, so what is the difference in the melina you get in the upper gi bleed and the lower gi bleed sir uh, upper gi bleed will have acid hematin uh, it will be uh, lower gi acid hemat Lo- lower color. Hemat- uh, color will be uh, it will be very dark darkish uh, dark more darker in the upper gi bleed sir no, lower gi there is no acid no so so how do you, how it is becoming a black in color bacterial in uh, bacterial uh... so that results in oxidative reduction okay the process since so that's an acid hematin formation here is an oxidative reduction you get but it's a, as you said rightly it is a slow transit time but that's not a presenting feature of a, usually of the lower ga but uh, with the history 
we we have not examined so still you should consider the upper gi okay. with the history we should consider upper gi you should consider inflammatory disease appendix in a particular mass particular problems so straight away you are uh, ruling out everything and going towards because your family history also straight away you are starting about the malignancy history so that that shows that you are predetermined that it is a malignancy and going ahead with that history let the history be a broad you are asking all those things and come together by process of exclusion yeah that is correct you understood how come you should come up with a differential rather than right you just say that it is a differential yes we can't we can't pinpoint anything here okay. which is a spring okay. i think patta radha krishna sir you have to ask more questions because we are used to ask so <laughs> my team yeah. my sir team asked two relevant questions i think that points out everything and uh, my teacher anand krishna is there when i don't know whether it is sir uh... <laughs> no i i i i last when uh, i want to interrupt him i'm just listening okay sir but uh, i tend to agree with him that uh, man of that age like lower quadrant so it's very unlikely to be upper <laughs> elementary tract pathology constant pain is very unlikely to be due to benign conditions at that age and uh, bleeding also is light lower quadrant with weight loss i think hmm? is to some extent justified in suspecting and ruling out malignancy before he thinks of other things because an inflammatory pathology will not explain uh, melina on and off for eight days and uh, weight loss has shown by his uh, close becoming loose so i won't seriously dispute his uh, one of the possibilities very high possibility is malignancy of the right because after all classic presentation is with uh, weight loss anemia and uh, non specific pain in the lower pain. so i think it looks acceptable to me to have it in your list of suspected uh, diagnosis but as uh, professor rajiv says that you should have uh, a set of different diagnoses uh... not always but when uh, you have because the other differential diagnosis in this condition would not have any evidence at all this has some evidence little bit of evidence appendicitis without acute onset how will you say appendicular lump and then how to account for bleeding all those issues will be there no so gautam what is your uh, diagnosis and uh, two to three different diagnosis in order of priority no no sir he has not gone for examination oh, right right okay with with the go with, with, go with uh, history that's gautam with the history that is sir is asking with the history how you are going to examine uh, further uh, uh, examination of the abdomen uh, student sir if there is uh, Uh, no, no, no. I mean, we are not going to examination. Uh, the history that you have, we should have. Uh, I mean, it looks like you have only malignancy as the diagnosis, and you're not sort of entertaining any other. At least verbally, you should point out that whether it could be a hallucinatory tuberculosis, a coma in that, that that area, or uh, a Crohn disease, certain other conditions. You could say that, and then you can say that. Age is against it, and you know some other symptom is against. So we should uh, have some sort of discussion before we go to examination. Sir, I if, would you uh, in case of tuberculosis, like to uh, consider a stromal tumor. Sir, a uh, stromal tumor are uh, developed from the submucosal layer of the bowel, or uh, but uh, bleeding is uh, uh, bleeding is uh, is not uh, usually uh, not there in stromal tumors. Sir. Are you sure to? Are you want to? Stick to that. That stromal tumors do not bleed. I'm not sure, sir. I'm not sure, sir. Huh? I'm not sure, sir. Uh, Gautam, how did he the patient describe Melina? He said, uh, he said it was uh, dark in color and foul smelling, and it was. Uh, Uh, it was uh, hard to wash. Okay, okay. So, uh, like, oh, I, can it be a so? Sorry. 
doctor can it be a sore sepsis uh, sir a patient in, uh, doesn't have any uh, pain on walking or uh, uh, doesn't have any pain in, uh, elsewhere in the body uh, like a spine uh, or the back lower back uh, so many times they don't so many times they don't actually okay i mean like uh, professor anand krishnan said malignancy would top but there'll be other other things which you have to think about right Dr. we'll come to that also after examination that uh, sore sepsis is unlikely to be associated with malignancy is it not that's what you must right. answer that's only the thing. idea is that's only thing you you must be able to justify your thinking. okay even negative diagnosis give reasons why you are not thinking of it Right. We think, tell them what we want. You take in a broad sense in the history taking. Don't yes, focus sir. only to the malignant. Malignant. All problems think rule out. Come to a conclusion. It can be then it will be better. You are thinking in a broad way. Okay. okay. Yeah. Keep keep your mind open. That is the only thing. Just can't wait. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. Examination. On general examination, ECOG is one. Uh, patient is conscious, oriented, moderately built and nourished. BMI is twenty five point five kg per square meter. Pallor present, no ictus, cyanosis, clubbing, uh, or pili edema, no generalized lymph nodopathy, not dyspnea or tachypnea. Uh, its temperature is normal. Uh, the pulse rate is 87 per minute. Regular rhythm on normal and uh, the normal volume and character. Blood pressure 130 uh, bar 80 mm Hg in left upper arm in sitting posture. Uh, respiratory rate is 18 per minute. Examination of abdomen after obtaining consent. Patient examined in a well lit room with adequate exposure from nipple to mid thigh. On inspection, abdomen contour is normal. Umbilicus is in midline. All quadrants move correspondingly with respiration. No visible mass. No visible peristalsis or pulsation. No scars, sinuses, or dilated veins. Flanks free. No renal angle fullness. Hernial orifice free, and external genitalia appears normal. This is a clinical photograph of the patient. You talk about pulsation also. on palpation no, uh, not warm uh, tenderness present in the right iliac fossa a vague mass of size 5 into 4 cm felt in the right iliac uh, region uh, irregular in shape surface is nodular ill defined borders firm in consistency it extends 4 cm from the midline medially 2 cm from anterior superior iliac vein laterally 11 cm from the right costal margin and 3 cm from pubic symphysis inferiorly the lower border of the mass is palpable no intrinsic mobility the plane of swelling is intra abdominal uh, there was no organomegaly uh, no other palpable masses doctor on percussion dull not heard over the mass liver span is 12 cm bilateral renal angle free auscultation normal bowel uh, bowel sounds heard a rectal examination normal tone no mass palpable no palpable deposits in the blue muscle Uh, no fecal staining. Uh, normal fecal staining present. No prostate megaly. Examination super cervical fossa normal. Uh, systemic examination. Cardiac system. S1 S2 heard. Respiratory system. Normal vesicular resonance heard. No adder sounds. Central nervous system. No focal neurological deficit. Spine normal. To summarize, a 62 year old farmer presented with dull aching, abdominal pain for one month, associated with melina, loss of weight. Loss of appetite and easy fatigue ability. On examination, uh, intra-abdominal mass of size five into four centimeter in the right iliac region, firm in consistency with the nodular surface and irregular margins, and ill-defined borders with no intrinsic mobility. Probably of malignant etiology. Go to inspection slide. Slide. I think everything you have mentioned except the pulsations. You have to see palpation. So anything else, sir? No, you have mentioned pulsation. The last leg. So you you have mentioned no scar, no sinus, no dilatation. What you are looking for, sir? Uh, <laughs> uh, if uh, scar, if sorry, there is any scar, uh, is your uh, has ruled out any surgery or? Last week you said no surgery. Then okay. So now you are going to look for a scar. And what sinus you are going to look for in the abdomen? Is it for completion? Yeah, lipid to, aburo, minigro. Malikoy. 
what is particularly okay it is better okay go ahead koile palpation excellent diagram gautam gautam but better not to say flanks are free no fullness okay. of the flanks what okay. is meant by flanks flanks are free hmm? okay. and same thing very frequently i hear hernia lorifices free means what does it mean no things are is selling there's sir. no main pulse no sir yeah okay things are is specific yeah right and in this also you, you, know, you should mention sorry the uh, specifically if the testes are there or not right okay. just external genitalia are normal in them you got to be a bit more specific okay that's correct right yeah. and in yeah, palpation yeah. gautam in palpation you mentioned tenderness tenderness present in the right leg for sir is a mass tender uh, sir uh, while on deep palpation it is tender sir that you have to mention because that will give uh, uh, it is a point no that we have to consider yes, another thing the lower border is palpable what about the other borders sir, uh, it was you uh, said all the borders are indefined borders. Sir, uh, indefined borders sir borders are all borders are palpable sir tell them your uh, your mass is intrinsic mobility is not there that means it is fixed mass then okay. how do you come to your conclusion it is intra abdominal sir uh, Uh, leg raise. Uh, I was able to make as the patient to like raise his leg. We are not mention all those things, but you have put two words: intrinsic mobility is no. That means the swelling is fixed swelling. It is not yes, mobile. mobile. But you are next line. You are saying it is intra abdominal. Yes, so what yes. intra abdominal swelling will have fear, no uh, no intrinsic mobility? Sir, uh, any lymph node enlargement or uh, uh, retro uh, even it can be retro peritoneal uh, structure, sir, or it can be. Uh, So what is your swelling? Is it retroperitoneal swelling or is it in the peritoneal? No, no. The sir's question is, how did you? You you are first saying it is intrinsic mobility. You are not talked about whether the swelling is moving with respiration or not, because anyway yeah. we are not. There is a mobility during inspiration. It's not there, but uh, intrinsic mobility. You are coming to that. Uh, surface is smooth, huh? It's a irregular surface. Yes, man. nodular yes man surface yes, nodular nodular form in that and uh, second thing is this uh, uh, same 4 cm from middle uh, 5 cm from doesn't it, make sense it is not necessary when okay. you are saying that the swelling in a particular region in the postgraduate level that is more important and see now you are saying the swelling is in the right side but why do you want to measure from the pubic symphysis you are saying 5 cm above the pubic symphysis it is no no relationship there so please try to avoid that you say that is a swelling where you have within the region concept if you say it is good and the size is also you have mentioned so you are not tested for whether it is intra abdominal or uh, retroperitoneal or it is on the surface sir uh, gotham uh, sorry gotham two conditions when the, the lump would not would be fixed or would not have any intrinsic mobility Either it's inflammatory or it's malignant, which has infiltrated, right? Infl. Okay. okay. Yes, so, so you should just answer that that it's uh, you think it's in it's infiltrating, right? So effectively, this is a hard nodular fixed swelling, right? But that will take away a few of the diagnosis. So please, this this is form. Oh, right. Oh. So again, irregular surface, ill-defined models. All we can't put, rule out malignant mean uh, inflammatory condition at this stage. Only <coughs> form. Form, um, but yes, inflammatory swelling can be also produce a fixity. Do you? Inflammatory. Yes, sir. Okay. Go ahead. Next. Next. Now the percussion you have mentioned uh, dull note over the mass liver span. Should you see the fluid, free fluid? Is it important? Yes, sir. Yes, Please sir. mention about it. Yes, sir. Again, so, if the mass is arising from the colon and if it is not producing obstructive symptoms, that means still there will be air. Yes, sir. Still, so you will get invite resident more than 
specifically saying it is a growth. Is do you think an exophytic growth? It is usually the growth is not exophytic growth. Exactly. Going, but are you sure that you are confident at that area? You got only a dull note fully. Yes, I, I was able to make only dull note over there. Where do you look for renal angle in this case? Uh, yep. How did you look for renal angle and why did you look for renal angle? Sir, uh, uh, no. uh, lower border of 12th rib and paras minus. Uh, no, I After softening, please switch up your audio. Dr. Sopnil. See, you have to mention about the note over the mass and uh, of course libas is it? And uh, as another question has said, uh, renal angle uh, uh, fullness only. You don't mention about whether free. What what, what we exactly look for here is there any resonant node? That is nothing is being occupied. Indirectly, if the free fluid is there, you will you might have a altered node. Okay, so you must mention about free fluid. And uh, usually, if in a firm firm mass, you and in a, over over the uh, interesting, you get some, you don't get dull note. You, as uh, Professor Jalal said, uh, you get a different note, not a dull note. Okay, but but you have seen the patient, you're given inference. Okay, next. So Gautam, if uh, is a fixed no fixed mass, uh, the right colon, for instance, will there uh, ever be a possibility of something? Uh, 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 is, is the renal angle on the right side to be full or, you know, uh, I mean, uh, if you have to link the fullness of the right renal angle and the mass, what will your thinking uh, be? What is your line of thinking? Sir, uh, if, I, if it, it, it might be an unascended kidney. Uh... Um, no. It is the renal angle. Fix <laughs> Unnecessary kidney will not come into the renal angle, as Professor Jalal says. If the mass you feel itself may be unnecessary kidney, if that is one of the diagnoses you think of. No, what, the... what else can cause a swelling in the renal angle with a carcinoma colon? Particularly one which is fixed. Can you think of anything? Complication of that which can cause a swelling? Sir, uh, obstruction of ureter may, may cause uh, uh, hydroelectronephrosis. So so uh, leading to a mass question is, question is asked, you must try to explain why you look for it, is it not? Okay. That this could be extending posteriorly, obstructing the ureter, it is leading in hydronephrosis, and you wanted to see whether it is there or not. That is okay. When the question asks, why do you want to look for it? They are not, uh, the question is not meant to tell you that you should not see. The question is meant to find out whether you know why you are saying. Next. Next slide. Supraclavicular fossa normal, it's better to say no palpable lymph node. Okay. Why do you want to look at their supraclavicular fossa? Sir, uh, any abdominal malignancy might have a uh, uh, possible lymph node meta uh, metastasis to... Can you trace the pathway? Uh, sir, uh, from cisterna chile, mm -hmm. from uh, cisterna chile to thoracic duct, uh, uh, insertion of thoracic duct is at left uh, junction of uh, left subclavian vein with the uh, internal, internal jugular vein. Cisterna so, so. chile communicating from which opening? Those along with which to the uh, thorax? In the diaphragm. In the diaphragm. Sir, uh, I have to go. Pray. 
Good. Okay. Hmm. So, uh, so how uh, does it reach the lymph node? You have not explained how it reaches from the thoracic duct to the lymph node. Sir, uh, obstruction of the uh, 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 retrograde sped from the thoracic uh, duct to the uh, lymph node, sir. Retrograde sped. Why it will spread retrograde? Along which lymphatics? So if it is a retrograde, it should come through the thoracic duct. You said it will come back. No, sir. Uh, that is retrograde, no? So same thoracic that it is coming why, back. Why is there the it opens into the confluence, no? So why is there no blood in the thoracic duct? I don't know, sir. Because there is a valve. Okay. <laughs> These malignant cells lodge proximal to the valve, okay. and the lymphatics of the supraclavicular gland also opens there. So they grow retrograde along those. Lymphatics to the so called Firkos node. Hmm? Where is that classically found? Between the two heads of sternocleidomastoid, sir. Indeed. That is, uh, that is where <laughs> somebody is talking again. Dr. Mishra. Okay. So you look for a deposit in the bloomer cell. What return prompted depot. you to look for that? Sir? What prompted you to look for a bloomer cell in this case? Sir, uh, I was uh, thinking of uh, malignancy. So, to, uh, clinically, I was uh, trying to rule out peritoneal metastasis by uh, looking at deposits in the bloomer cell. Sir. That statement is wrong, Gautam. Bloomer shelf is the deposit that you feel. The space that you are looking at is the rectovesicle pouch. Pouch. Okay. Huh? Okay. That's not called bloomer shelf. Bloomer shelf is a shelf-like feeling because of those deposits there when you feel the anti-rectal wall. Okay. Peritoneum so, gets folded like that. The deposits, you feel it as if a shelfing. So how do you differentiate? Is it a bloomer cell or a growth in the rectum? Because synchronous metastasis mean tumor can be there. Sir, uh, if... Uh... If it is a prime uh, malignancy from the rectum, the mucosa won't be uh, free, sir. Good, good, uh, good. If it is in a depo uh, peritoneal deposit, uh, the mucosa will be free, sir. Correct. Okay, we'll move forward. Yeah, what next? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your answer should be you can move the mucosa over the swelling. Okay. This free and all that doesn't explain much, you know. Okay. What you're looking for is mucosal mobility on the mass. Mass. So, what are the diagnoses you are left with? You have only one, anything had to be added, subtracted? Uh, so you have sum summarized the important issues in this slide. Based on that, what are the possibilities? Sir, uh, malignancy my, would be my first. Uh, Malignancy is never a diagnosis, you know. Malignancy yes, is a uh, layman's term. Lay. Okay, so, uh, right, uh, right colon malignancy uh, would be the uh, malignancy. Don't use the word malignancy. Again, you're saying right colon. Carcinoma, carcinoma, sicum would be my first diagnosis, sir. Uh, okay, then. Uh, at this stage, uh, See, the. From Dr. Jailal, others have pointed out this type of bleeding to the extent of producing melina. Continuously for eight days, is unusual in carcinoma of the cecum. Usually, you get occult blood, chronic blood loss, and they present with anemia. So, is there any other possibility you want to keep in mind, or you have ruled out everything else with significant bleeding and the right side mass? Can this be a lymphoma? Do they have? Do you have bleeding in those cases? Uh, sir, lymphoma uh, usually be, bleeding won't be there, sir. Uh, uh, bleeding won't be there in lymphoma, sir. Uh, it is. Uh, it also develops from uh, from the. Do you get such irregular mass? 
in irregular muscles uh, can be uh, uh, found in uh, tuberculosis elastical tuberculosis also sir uh, with sir. did you get bleeding there uh, no sir there, there won't be bleeding sir uh, uh, the differentials are uh, not fixed uh, appropriate uh, with the history of uh, loss of weight appetite and uh, malignancy sir it does not correlate with uh, anything else than malignancy sir here. you won't even think of possibility of stromal tumor Sir, uh, stromal tumor. Uh, what is the size of stromal tumor in order of frequency of occurrence? Sir, uh, stomach. Uh, next to that, uh, followed by. Uh, sir, uh, right, uh, colon, sir. Not colon. Small bowel. Small. Small, small bowel. Then colon. Finally, rectum. Okay, so can it be a terminal ileal stromal tumor or a cecal stromal tumor? Uh, you should entertain all these diagnoses, but you should okay. say they're less probable. Say, less you can't say no. Okay. Can it be adenocarcinoma with the appendix? Adenocarcinoma of appendix. Uh... Because we are little worried about the pain. Because you are saying one month continuously, patient has a pain. Sikkim is a roomy. It is a, not producing any obstruction. Not producing that with the continuously. If the patient is having pain, okay. Have have all those possibilities in your mind. Okay. 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 See, if you tell only one diagnosis, then it looks a little difficult in the examination. Okay. Otherwise, there is no need for investigation at all. Is it done? So, what is your final diagnosis? You thought by all your examination? Sir, Can you uh, mention it, please? Sir, uh, carcinoma uh, sequence, sir. And uh, sir said you should have other alternative diagnosis. Yeah, you should always say alternate diagnosis. Yeah, my. Diagnosis will be this, uh, but uh, for my different diagnoses are one, two, three, but then you know they're, they're less probable because of the following reasons. So you kept your mind open because for all you know, you may have a surprise when you investigate. So you can't just stick to any time, any, any case when you discuss, you can't have one single diagnosis and say others are not possible. You should be open. I mean, that is what why, why you say cecum and not the acidic colon. Yeah, that is a very simple. Uh, uh, it's why, a fixed cause, fixity, uh, not intrinsic voltage is not there. Cecum is usually it's not that. Do you think it cannot be an ascending colon? Uh, you uh, have the you say right sided. Right sided. Say, say for diagnosis is to say right colonic carcinoma. Hmm? Don't have to be so precise. Cecum. Yes, he has mentioned it like that. Here he has mentioned, but he said sick up. Yes, yes. <laughs> Good. Then how okay. you are going to proceed? Sir, uh, uh, investigation to confirm a diagnosis, sir. Yes, that is correct. But uh, carry on. Next. But here you said it correctly, but you have put it in a put it put it wrong the other way <laughs> wrongly. <laughs> Always uh, do all the investigations to confirm the diagnosis first. Yeah, that's important. Followed by investigations for staging and staging case workup, followed by uh, preparing the then fitness for Sorry. treatment. Last, not in the order that you do, but that's the order that you like to tell in the examination. Hmm? But concurrently, you can do. Hmm. You prefer ultrasonography first or colonoscopy first? Sir, ultrasonogram first, sir. So why, what is the yield of ultrasonogram in this? What is it that you are looking for? Sir, uh, I look for the org, uh, 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 site of origin, sir, of the mass. Is that Whether a good investigation for a hollow viscous? Uh, no, sir, uh, but uh, whether any ma uh, uh, liver uh, liver enlargement is there or any? Uh, no, 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 no,
Is that something that will give you the diagnosis? No, oh, sir. Uh, I will put it in other words. As I said, the investigation to confirm my diagnosis. What is the first one? Uh, to confirm my diagnosis, if it is a luminal pathology, I have to go with the colonoscopy. It, is it yeah. a luminal pathology? Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Bleeding is there. Uh, what is your diagnosis? What uh, age is a carcinoma colon? If not carcinoma a... colon, sir. Gotham, Gotham. Gotham. You have to first decide whether it's a luminal pathology or anything else. So you do an ultrasound. You do an ultrasound to see whether it is luminal within the lumen or outside, plus other features of malignancy. If you get any any thing, then you go in for you can't just go in for colonoscopy straight away. No one does that. Ultrasound will tell you it can, right? That's us. So what is the intention of you to do a colonoscopy? No. What, what all you are going to look in the colonoscopy? Uh, sir, uh, extent of uh, 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 whether the, it is a luminal pathology, sir. Uh, whether the two, uh, there is a, uh, a growth from the colon, sir. Uh, if uh, extent of the growth and there is uh, any asynchronous malignancy in other parts of the colon, sir. And rectum. Suppose you get not, into... only, not only synchronous malignancy, but pre malignant condition, polyposis. Pre pre what are the pre malignant conditions? Uh, sir, adenomatous uh, polyps, uh, polyp, any uh, polyps, the cell polyps. What adenoma is more significant for you? All adenomas? Sir, uh, villus, uh, villus type of adenoma uh, is, is more uh, significant, sir. Okay. So you look for the tubular adenoma, the malignant turnover is around 5 percentage. If you are having a tubular villus or villus, that you are uh, seeing. So that is one you are looking for. Anything else? If uh, any uh, any polyp is there, uh, adenomas and polyps. How will that influence your treatment if you find polyps? Sir, uh, in the uh, rest of the colon. Sir, uh, if, uh, so if there is a right-sided colon, you said, you will do a right hemicolectomy. Suppose we have a polyp there. And is it is going to change your treatment plan, or you will fully do with the? Uh, sir, I, uh, we have to rule out uh, any uh, pre uh, the polyp has to be biopsied or uh, has to be uh, removed uh, against. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. There are tw twenty polyps. Okay, which one you will biopsy? All of them? No, sir. Is it a polyp is coli or not? In other words, Professor Ake wants to know when you will you call it a polypus familial polypus is coli. Is when there are more than 100 area? polyps, when there are more than 100 polyps, uh, we can call it as uh, uh, a polyp. More, more than 100 polyps, will the treatment change? Sir, yes, sir. Uh, if there is more than 100 polyps, the number of polyps will uh, have the higher risk of uh, malignancy, sir. Uh, then we might have to go for a total proctocolectomy with uh, what is the probability of uh, polyposis coli turning into malignancy? Uh, sir, 100 percent, uh, sir. If uh, there is, will you do upper GA? Sir, upper GA has to be done, sir. Uh, history of duodenal uh, adenomas and gastric uh, bundle polyps are also there, sir. So, uh, upper GA polyp has to be done. Upper GA scopy has to be done, sir. The sir, asked, you no, know, 20 polyps are there. Which polyp you will do biopsy? Sir, uh, the largest one. Is there any size significant or what size more than which is important? Among oh, I don't don't know, sir. Maybe not Other questions, sir. You can I mean uh, give some guidelines on that. Okay. See this uh, now, as he says, bigger ones are you know the we have that. Uh, NBI imaging where you can have suspicious lesions, it can biopsy. 
and then of course the whole idea is a patient has more than 100 the point yeah the point is if he has polyposis 100 may be all right for definition but the chances of if having multiple adenomatous polyps of varying sizes in the rest of the bowel will be seriously concerned about leaving it behind is that not for surveillance because the change is very subtle and it's not always easy to detect by you know, routine colonoscopic uh, examination so would you consider extending the limit of resection in such patients yes sir uh, yes sir I, we might even uh, go for a total proctor colectomy sir depending on which segments if it is in continuity you exercise okay. that otherwise if it's discontinuous distant from that and you are concerned then yeah, and there is a family history or they have got the genetic predisposition which uh, mutations predispose to malignancy in polyposis sir uh, apcg uh, gene mutations sir uh, phi chromosome phi q21 anything else it's like uh, also uh, Keras, uh, Keras, Keras, Endras, Braf, all of them. Braf. Mm. So, Suppose if you have polyps, irrespective of numbers, and you have mutations which are significant for development of carcinoma, then you will seriously consider doing an extended uh, resection, is it not? Yes. The patient is not willing for colonoscopy, he is totally refusing, he is not... To you have any other option? Uh, sir, uh, virtual colonoscopy uh, might be done, sir, but... What is the disadvantage of that? A biopsy cannot be taken, sir. It's a non-invasive test and biopsy cannot be taken, sir. We, we cannot arrive at a tissue diagnosis. Sir. So what is the indication for a CT colonography or a virtual colonoscopy? Sir, uh, it can be used as a screening uh, modality, sir. Studies have shown that whenever you do that, usually it has to be followed by a colonoscope. Therefore, many people advise against that except in one condition. What is that? In obstructing lesions, when you cannot see the proximal, proximal. colon visual. Right? Yes. Otherwise, it has no advantage. If the patient refuses, of course, you have no option. But otherwise, it's not a great investigation. So what, what histology you will get when you are sending the specimen? Sir, uh, 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 carcinoma, uh, adenocarcinoma. Uh, can you get one or two points of that? Sir, uh, different, uh, uh, differentiation of the tumor would be there, sir. So, I'm not getting a say it is adenocarcinoma, what will be the uh, features of histology? Sir, uh, glandular uh, uh, pattern of uh, mucosa should be there. The glandular uh, pattern should be there, sir. And uh, will you differentiate it is carcinoma in situ or uh, carcinoma? Sir, uh, in, uh, when the inv uh, invasiveness is de depend uh, depends on the uh, Muscular is proper, layer if it has been breached by the carcinoma. This is your staging level. Huh? Carcinoma in situ will not go to the muscular is proper, no? Sir, uh, if, if basement membrane of... Uh, so, so you see breach in the basement membrane? Uh, basement membrane. I'm seeing... Uh, okay. So why do you do a CACT? Why is contrast enhanced? What all would you like to look for in this patient on a CACT? Sir, uh, first uh, look for uh, the loop, uh, or, organo, uh, origin, sir. If it is uh, if it is bowel or extra lumin luminal or whether it's extra luminal and uh, lymph nodal metastasis is there or not. And uh, if there is uh, any uh, metastasis to the uh, liver, also uh, look for any uh, free fluid in the abdomen, sir. How do metastasis look like? In which phase you get the metastasis? Sir, uh, in the arterial phase, there will be hypo, uh, hypodensity and dense lesions will be noticed. Are you sure of that?
So you do a CCT. What is the idea behind doing CCT in all patients who are suspicious, uh, suspected uh, right colon malignancies? What all, in addition to what you already said, what else will you look for? You are going to plan some treatment based on this. Sir, uh, whether uh, the infiltration into uh, the uh, infiltration to ureter is there or not, or any uh, vascular structure is involved, the infiltration to ureter might, uh, any obstructive uh, uh, uropathy is there, uh, hydroureteronephrosis are there, whether uh, the patient might need for, uh, there is, an, is there a need for uh, urological intervention in, in terms of uh, 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 ureteric stenting? We have to look Why for ureteric it. stenting if the ureter is involved? Sir, if, if it is an obstructive, uh, if it is compressive, uh, if the tumor is compressing the ureter, uh, then uh, to relieve the, to relieve obstruction, we have uh, 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 stenting has to be done, sir. So, treatment of an infiltrated ureter is ureteric stenting, is it? No, sir. Uh, obstruction only, sir. If, if it is infiltration, uh, it has, it has uh, gone into stage T, uh, TB. What sir. else are you interested if it is infiltrating? in a CVCT, which is much more important. Are you not interested in the opposite kidney? Yes, sir. Why? Sir, whether the, uh, whether the, uh, the opposite kidney is uh, normal to maintain the uh, normal function, is there any uh, comorbid conditions uh, that, that uh, might affect this. Uh... Okay, well, you have the reports of this? Sir, uh, I have uh, CCTs uh, done, sir. Uh, colonoscopy is not been done, sir. Right, sir. Okay. Can you read this? Sir, uh... is, is there free for this? No. <laughs> Can you tell what is no touch technique for the resection? Sir, uh, no touch technique is uh, done by ligating the vascular pedicle first without uh, disturbing the tumor uh, so that there is uh, no uh, luminal, lymphatic, or vascular spread of uh, uh, tumor cells. Sir. And then uh, after uh, ligating the vascular pedicle, we, are, uh, we will move on with the resection of the tumor. What are the other components of the no touch technique? One is the ligation of the pedicle at the only. What are the other components before you touch the tumor? You have to cut the bowel, okay, both sides. Okay. And then you have to give the some local agents also in that area. How can you remove the tumor? Wait, uh, there are four components in that. But talk about the salient features of the CT, what you see here. Sir. Uh, it is better you project one film. Because now this is not, not able to read. You, you can say, you can read because you have already seen the full film. Sir, uh, pl uh, plain CT of the abdomen, sir. Uh, this is not uh, pain CT, yeah? Uh, sir, uh, sorry, with the contrast, uh, sir, uh, rectal contrast has been uh, given, sir. Oh. Uh, uh, rectal contrast of, uh, rectal con contrast is there, sir, because uh, lumen, <coughs> there's a, a contrast in the lumen of the bowel, sir. Okay. Sir, and I, I could, uh, in, the, in these cuts, I could, uh, in the fourth row, uh, uh, five, uh, four, Four, five, six. I could uh, see some uh, uh, luminal thickening is there, sir. Mm. In the fourth row, four, five, six uh, cuts. I can uh, see some luminal uh, narrowing. Can't hear you, Gautam. Sir, sir, uh, in the CT film uh, uh, on the fourth row, for uh, four, five, six images, I could see some uh, uh, luminal thicken. Uh, there is a thickening of the bowel wall with uh, narrowing of the lumen, sir. Okay. What else? Sir, uh, 
So this patient was not given IV contrast, right? Uh, no, sir. No IV contrast was given. So we can't comment on the liver. Is there some free fluid? Sir. Um, by the side of the liver? Yes, sir. Uh, there is some free fluid here, sir. And there is also a hypodense lesion. In the next film, I could see some. Uh, okay. There is a hypodense lesion here in the segment six. Right. Otham, why do you think there is a free fluid? Because the uh, 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 the pouch, the paternal pouch is free. There's no there's no fluid there between the liver and the kidney. There's a paternal pouch. There's no fluid there. So why do you say there is fluid? I can't see any. This the pouch seems to be clear. Right, the kidney. And the liver, that, that dark spot there? Yes, sir. That's the hepatorenal pouch. Okay. What next? Sir, so uh, you, how do you test for Melina? Sorry. How do you test for Melina? Yes, how do you know this, this is blood or Melina and not... Uh, just black stool sir, uh, because of iron. Sir, uh, Gwaik test. Uh... Okay. Gwaik test is, is very messy. It's not done anymore. What is Gwaik test? How do sir, you do uh, it? Sir, uh, peroxidase uh, will react with the uh, uh, heme, sir. Uh, uh, following a, uh, yeah, it, is, it is to be smeared on a card and then it is change in color. It's very messy. It's a, there are better tests now. What, what, what is, can be done. Yes, it's fit test, fecal immunochemical test. That's the one which is yeah, used okay. these days. Okay. Yes, uh, with the CT findings and what, what else you are going to do? The confirmation of the diagnosis is there. Now metastatic workup or anything you want to do? And do you have a contrast CT with IV contrast? Because it's still not uh, very clear as to what is that liver lesion. Okay. I didn't have. I don't have any. You, uh, you answer, Professor Jayala. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How you are going to proceed with that? Any metastatic workup you want to do? Sir, uh, in view of uh, this hypotensification, we can uh, uh, evaluate further, sir. Uh, is there any uh, tumor markers can be done, sir? If uh, there is a very high rise in the tumor markers, uh, then uh, it might be a metastatic uh, tumor, sir. That what tumor markers? A C A C A which tumor marker? C A tumor marker. Carcinogenic. Uh, is it only for diagnosis that you do that? Sir, uh, for prognosis, sir. Uh, it is a prognostic uh, mainly for a prognostic marker, sir. Anything else is the importance? Sir, uh, if uh, after resection of the tumor, uh, there should be a fall in the tumor marker, sir. Uh, if there is a fall, then uh, there is uh, no. Uh, then the uh, resection is enough. R zero resection has been done, sir. And it also, if, if more, there is uh, more, more than that, yes. repeat rise in CEA precedes recurrence diagnostic, right? So for follow up, it is very important, and you always do it before surgery because not all colonic cancers are CEA secretors. So for those on whom they are, the CEA is normal before surgery cannot be used for follow up. It's useful only in those where it is raised for you. Non-secretors. Non-secretors. Indian. So this you have to do it. No obstruction, no nodal involvement, right-sided. Yeah. Do you think CEA will rise or on the left-side colon CEA will be rising more with obstruction? Sir, uh, CEA is uh, raised in only 70% of the people, sir. Oh, that is uh, secretors and non-secretors. Non-secretors, yes, sir. CRIs also shows it's, there is a, some features of obstruction, more of lymph node involvement. So that only will be more CA. So in this case, with that, what is going to CA is going to tell you whether it's a liver secondary or not? Uh, yes, uh, yes, it might be indicative, sir, if the, if the rise is in uh, thousands, more than thousands, uh, it, it could be indicative of uh, distant metastasis, sir. Or it's indicative of non operability. No, non operability. You have more than thousand, you don't go for a metastatectomy. So that is not to say that there is a secondary is there or not. So Gautam, here you are with uh, some suspicious liver lesion. 
with the uh, mass in the ascending colon bar cecum. Now, how will you know whether that is metastatic or whether it is the only uh, liver lesion or there are some more liver lesions? The PET CT has to be done, sir. Uh, for metastatic workup, I would like to do a PET CT for this patient, sir, to look for any other uh, metastatic uh, in the uh, lungs. Or, uh, you have the PET CT, or is it done? No, sir, not at done, sir. Okay. But, uh, what is the other great advantage of uh, PET CT prior to surgery or prior to treatment? Sir, uh, SUV index uh, gives an uh, I, idea about the activity, proliferative activity of the tumor, sir. SUV max. See, fall in activity is much more predictive of response than change in CT finding. That is earlier. So, uh, so you have, when you are giving uh, new adjuvant therapy, that CT is very useful, particularly for nodal disease or metastatic disease to see whether there is response. Okay. Now, uh, this, this is a PET CT shows only uh, the colonic lesion as well as the liver lesion to be a possible secondary. Now, there are no other uh, lesions elsewhere. Uh, what would you like to do? Sir, uh, I would like to go with the uh, uh, resection of uh, both the primary and the metastatic uh, tumor, sir. Suppose the patient has extensive nodal involvement. Uh, if there is ex uh, nodal uh, extensive nodal involvement, I will... Uh, the criteria to say that you will do simultaneous metastatectomy and uh, colectomy. Yeah. Sir, oligometastasis, if, the, if uh, it is an oligometastasis, we can go with uh, simultaneous. Sir. Oligometastasis in one is in the... Uh, only in the liver or in the lung or anywhere? Less than five, uh, five sites. Uh, secondary is less than five sites is called oligometastasis. But uh, uh, suppose I am not able to do R0 resection at the primary. So is it possible for me to go? Is it necessary for me to go into the metastatic treatment? No, sir. Uh, R1 uh, R0 resection is possible. Then uh, uh, then we can go for metastatic. You have a certain criteria to say that why, when you will go for simultaneously because you are not told anything about the nodal status. You are not done any other investigation to assess the nodal status. Or extra hepatic disease. Extra hepatic disease. Uh, I don't know the criteria. Okay. And how, how will you... I mean, is there is any role of diagnostic laparoscopy? Yes, sir. Uh, diagnostic laparoscopy uh, can be... Uh, it, should, it should be done, sir. I, if you are planning for surgery to rule out any uh, peritoneal deposits has to be ruled out first, sir. What is N1C? Sir, uh, N1C is uh, presence of uh, peritoneal deposits, sir. In, uh, peritoneal deposits? Sir. That will come as a M1. M1C. Sir, uh, sorry, sir. N1C. 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 Not M. So what, what is the surgery would you like to do for the colonic lesion? Leave the liver lesion or not? We we'll think liver lesion is not there. What what surgery would you contemplate? Uh, right, uh, right, right radical hemicolectomy. What is radical there? Sir, uh, nodal dissection should be done uh, for uh, uh, or uh, all uh, no, nodal uh, nodal uh, groups should be removed sir, until uh, when you're talking about uh, the arterial uh, you know dissection and to which which artery would you which, what all the arteries would you uh, include in uh, resecting the right right colon sir, uh, iliocolic right colic and uh, right branch of middle colic uh, has to be right or if you are planning for a uh, right hemicolic uh, would you do uh, an open surgery or a laparoscopic surgery what is the uh, present practice? Sir, uh, laparoscopic uh, surgery can be done, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on the expertise of the surgeon and the availability of the... Uh, what are the approaches? Uh, what are the three or what are the four uh, approaches in laparoscopic right hemicolectomy? Sir, uh, 
in laparoscopy uh, la- uh, medial to lateral uh, dissection is done sir mm. then one is medial to lateral other one lateral to medial uh, open no, no lateral to medial also laparoscopy okay there is one cranial to caudal and what is the fourth one to caudal caudal to cranial there is one retroperitoneal retroperitoneal these are the four approaches that are done so can you do a combined uh, a lap uh, right hemi with a lap uh, 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 liver lesion dissection that it can be done sir if it is in the six, uh, segment 6 uh, of the liver sir uh, it is uh, possible to do uh, lap resection sir lap or topic resection sir right suppose it is a cirrhotic liver sir uh, no sir i won't go for uh, any resection sir. if it is a cirrhotic liver cirrhotic liver no surgery no sir uh, no it is based on the remnant liver how much remnant. liver you to so so cirrhotic you need to go more more so there are different uh, technique how do you augment uh, stage uh, so we are not talking about that now so can you do any chemotherapy new adjuvant chemotherapy sir uh, if it is uh, metastatic uh, a tumor uh, then we can go for uh, uh, chemotherapy first sir for, uh, if, for it if it is metastatic, metastatic only if it's metastatic or uh, sir uh, there is uh, no clear uh, bulky uh, tumor t4 t- lesion lots of lymph nodes would you like to try new adjuvant first what is the risk of doing primary surgery there i think if it is metastatic you go for palliative right. so you talk about uh, new adjuvant only in the case when you attempt a curative yes. i can uh, so i think it is we are going at a slow pace i think uh, the time is up uh, according to dr mark and we dr dr professor ak will sum sum up uh, yes yes bottom yes. performance and says whether he is eligible for a pass or what all the in <laughs> aspect of his presentation no, I, i think he has done well we have been a little uh, too busy with him probably put him put him off his stride but i i think otherwise it's good yes. but you have to be a little more precise in uh, the way that you present so that uh, the impression is conveyed that you know the subject gautam anyway that yes, yes. very good gautam you have I mean, uh, read and you have concentrated a little more be focused illa irke and the clinics la live i'll get back to you huh? otherwise yeah. it is better in colonic surgery we either talk about upfront uh, chemotherapy or upfront surgery even if you are it is not probably you are going for then you can go for a residual surgery we don't talk the term new adjuvant therapy okay i think gautam you should have a uh, apart from diagnosis you should have a differential diagnosis you have a plan of investigations based on all those things and then you come to a final diagnosis and you give a proper approach how you are going to do that you actually practice in your hospital all the best okay thank you Gautam, uh, do you have any questions to clarify with the examiners? Uh, no, sir. Do you have any doubts? Vinay, can you please wait, Vinay? Uh, no, sir. Uh, no, sir. So, if you have any doubts, clarifications of the senior faculty here, do you have any questions to be clarified? Sir, no, sir. So, uh, then, good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, can I sir, are you with us? Can I sir, join and then again? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He is not here. Now. Okay. So, thank you, faculty, for uh, discussing this case. We took a little longer, but still, uh, uh, we have to give uh, equal justice to the next candidate also. Uh, next case is going to be uh, uh, right left for some mass. Sorry, I'm sorry. If you guys take mass to be presented by Dr. Vinay, uh, he's from uh, Kasturba Gandhi Medical College, Manipal. Vinay, uh, good luck to you. Please start your presentation. And I could see one question in the chat box. 
kindly give okay. some information regarding criteria to follow for liver metastasectomy in colorectal CA. Uh, I would request the faculty to kindly consider uh, taking this question now before we move on to the next case. Anand sir, would you like to take sir? The primary tumor must be able to do a R0 resection. No extrahepatic lesion. The remnant liver, where we will be able to preserve the remnant liver should be preserved. And uh, this is uh, primarily I've got to do. And you can even sometimes we can do in a stage liver or augmentation or that procedure can be. But in general, you should not be extrahepatic, you should not be lesion, and you should be able to do the R0 resection. And you should be able to do the uh, it's a, after the resection, the adequate permanent liver should be saved. So the candidate would also like to know regarding the follow-up protocol. See, follow-up protocol remains the same way. It is astringent as a malignancy primary in colorectal cancer. In metastasis, if you have done an R0 resection, then you keep them under close follow-up once in three, three, three months for first year and once in six months during the second year. The follow-up will mandate a clinical examination. A typically an ultrasound is sufficient, but if in case of suspicion, you escalate into higher imaging facility with three monthly monitoring of the CEA. CEA, if you have an index rise and you have established a clear drop to normalcy after a metastasectomy, that appears that we have done a complete uh, the therapy for the patient and it comes into a favorable thing. In spite of doing a metastasectomy and the primary removal, if the CEA is not coming down, then they are at high risk and they are the patients who will warrant the oncomine assay or the more rapid uh, molecular uh, subset analysis of this colorectal tumor as well as the metastatic resected uh, specimen. But then if not, monitoring with ultrasound, CEA and clinical examination remains the standard of care. Uh, maybe Dr. Ranan sir and uh, Pata sir can uh, improve upon if uh, I'm not uh, given a complete answer. Over to you, sir. Those are the people who also may require biologicals. Correct, sir. Perfectly understand. See, regarding uh, liver resections, uh, they can be done either simultaneously or in a state manner. Uh, but here again, the the liver, the health of liver comes into view, the size of the metastasis. We should be making uh, sure that the future liver remnant is adequate, the rest of the liver quality is good. Uh, and we have to optimize it. Suppose if any of the criteria you feel that the liver lesion is considerably big and is going to pose a risk to the patient, we have to consider downsizing the tumor either by chemotherapy or by percutaneous or even endovascular interventions and here uh, the, the liver becomes the focus of attention because we shouldn't have a patient with uh, liver induced uh, uh, problems or liver morbidity subsequently. So there, there are so many methods of uh, optimizing liver tumors before we ca take up uh, uh, either simultaneously or uh, later on by portal van embolization and so on. So here we have to keep in mind that uh, it can be done simultaneously provided we have good remnant liver behind. And of course, and you also be, uh, must be very sure that uh, uh, you are good at uh, dealing with uh, liver surgery. You know, colon can be managed by many, but liver can only be managed by a few. That you should keep in mind. So you should, when answering this question, it's very easy to say that both can be operated simultaneously. But so many other criteria should be kept in mind when we are doing both because the chance of morbidity will be quite high when you are doing these things together. Intent is curative, which is not not right. not so That's so right. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Vinay, the stage is yours. Please share your presentation and uh, start yes, your talk. Sir. Yes. Sir. Good luck to you, Dr. Vinay. Thank you, sir. So, shall I start? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Good evening. Uh, this is Dr. Vinay from KMC Manipal. I would like to thank for the opportunity to uh, present a case in this forum. So I am presenting a 54-year-old lady who is a housewife who has uh, come to the hospital with the complaints of pain abdomen since one month and reduced food intake since 20 days. The, the pain abdomen was insidious in onset without any progression, more in the upper middle abdomen, dull aching, 
constant throughout the day which increases after consuming food no history of radiation or uh, no history of radiation of pain relieving factors or postural preferences the reduced food intake uh history was like she was able to consume solid diet 20 days back which eventually has reduced in quantity and currently she is consuming only liquid diet she has a sense of upper abdomen fullness immediately after consuming uh, the food no loss of appetite she has a loss of weight of 2 kg in the past month no complaints of vomiting or abdominal distension Uh, she has history of dark a uh, passing dark tarry stools since 15 days and history of difficulty in passing stool there is no history of fever with chills or jaundice she was consuming a mixed diet before uh, before uh, she had history of reduced appet- uh, reduced food intake she has had appetite before but re- recently has reduced she has normal bladder habits passes little quantity of stools on straining no addiction she has not had any similar complaints in the past she is not a hypertensive diabetic or a patient of any cardiac com- condition she has undergone a tubectomy 25 years back and a vaginal hysterectomy 8 years back in view of abdominal uterine bleeding abnormal uterine bleeding no similar complaints in the family So summarizing the history here is a 54 year old lady complaining with a uh, complaints of pain of abdomen and reduced food intake the pain is more in the upper middle of abdomen uh, without any radiation increasing after consuming food and the reduced food intake was since 20 days currently she is consuming only liquid diet uh, without uh, loss of appetite and loss of 2 kg of weight in a month also history of dark tarry stool since 15 days with history of difficulty in passing stool no history of any uh, hematemesis also no complaints of vomiting no complaints of vomiting or hematemesis what is meant by difficulty in passing stools uh, she only passes little amount of stools with uh, uh, after straining a lot because when you say like that it can be pain it can be hard stools we don't understand what is meant by difficulty in passing stools hmm? so you are saying he's got pellety stools very small amounts yes sir huh? yes, yes sir that's fine. okay after tarry stools will pass very easily hmm. so okay. after all this you have written two diagnoses i'd like yes. to know the justification for each of those Uh, on the, the next car- page the carcinoma of the stomach uh, is uh, what uh, evidence is, there is from what you have said till now about the body of the pancreas uh, it's only the uh, pain of abdomen and uh, reduced food intake because of the compression of stomach pro- with, uh, uh, you are very clear there is no postural variation in the pain there is no say, radiation no pain in the back you said hmm? uh, the group uh, and, and and everything started with pain yes sir uh any tumors which are arising from the body if they uh, grow anteriorly they might not have any pain radiating to the back how many you have seen like that in the ever since you joined ms uh the body no. pancreas doesn't have pain it grows only anteriorly and causes obstruction of the stomach by circumferential okay. involvement no, i have not seen that so why mention it then yes and can tumor body of pancreas can be a differential diagnosis to your symptoms at all no, that's what i am worried please so you you said Did from you a salt it could be changing is it a inlet or outlet uh, obstruction Uh, outlet sir no but no, you said one one symptom you said early satiety yes, what sir. is the early satiety in stomach due to what it is because of the loss of the receptive relaxation of the stomach yeah so uh, the elasticity of the wall is gone yes whereas outlet will produce postprandial fullness and vomiting yes That two and different symptoms is it not? It's not the same. Yes, sir. 
Uh, early satiety means it's an infiltrative tumor. Like linitis, their stomach is not able to distend. Small quantity, they feel full. Yes. But so you are not mistaken. No vomiting at all, Dr. Patient? No, sir. She does not complain of any vomiting. You mentioned the normal yes. appetite and loss of weight of 2 kgs in one month. Yes, sir. Is that, is that likely no, normal appetite with an extensive carcinoma which has caused loss of distensibility? She actually says uh, she has a feel of hung hunger. Uh, so I, I had uh, thought that it is she is she has appetite. What predisposes to carcinoma stomach? What is the first change which happens when there is an extensive carcinoma? Uh, there would Atro be early satiety. Sir. Atrophic gastritis. No. Yes, sir. So. Appetite will be lost. Yes. Yes. So how will you have normal appetite with an extensive carcinoma stomach? Yes. Then you have to wonder whether it's really carcinoma stomach. Is it not? Yes, sir. Okay. Sometimes, whatever patient tells, you have to be a little discriminatory. Okay. What is the sensation she is feeling? Is she feeling hunger or is she feeling burning? Or is she feeling pain? Yes. You said pain. Describe that pain. What exactly she had? Uh, she had a dull aching pain more in the upper uh, abdomen, which was constant throughout the day and increasing after consuming food. There's no radiation and uh, no postural preference. Everything points towards normal gastritis. Yes. Um, so, what made you to think it is a carcinoma? Uh, short duration and uh... Please remember short duration. Is it uh, always a feature of carcinoma? Uh, no, sir. Then you think short duration made you to think of carcinoma? Okay. Why, why do you want to put this as a carcinoma for this patient? Diagnosis? Uh, one, uh, she is uh, elderly and uh, there is a... Uh... Why not it is a stricture in the upper use of this? Or a lower, I mean, OG junction. He does not have dysphagia. Oh, you said why he is then converting from solid to liquid? Uh, means, uh, she does not have any dis uh, regurgitation symptoms as well. So okay. I have not thought of uh, esophageal gastric. Okay. So that's the only feature to think it is a carcinoma. Uh, also, uh, malina and loss of weight. Does the carcinoma start with pain? Uh, you no, said sir, uh, one month of pain and 20 days of... Uh, that is that's a typical pain you said. With a, it's aggravated by food. Yes, sir. Yes. So, is uh, a carcinoma uh, pain be aggravated by food? But... Uh, uh, In other words, if there is pain in carcinoma stomach, what does it signify? It would be an infiltrative carcinoma. That means uh, uh, infiltrating uh, the muscularis mucosa as well. That would have caused uh, symptoms even earlier. Okay, now because we are, we are still in the, the possibility of pancreas, I don't think it is uh, better you, I mean, but think of that here. Okay. Go ahead with the examination. Upper GA pathology. Yes, sir. Next. Uh, on examination, she was conscious and cooperative. Uh, ECOG uh, uh, zero. A consent was taken prior to the examination. She was moderately built. Her vitals were uh, within normal range. She has no signs of pallor, sinuses, icterus, edema, or lymphadenopathy. Uh, 
she was uh, examined in supine position after taking consent uh, exposed from the nipple to mid thigh she had a protuberant abdomen umbilicus is central and inverted there was no visible mass uh, concordant segments move with respiration no visible peristalsis or pulsation no dilated veins the tubectomy scar uh, which is present uh, in the suprapubic region which has healed by primary intention uh, the hernial sites uh, were normal on palpation uh, it was an intra abdominal mass in the epigastrium measuring 7 cm in horizontal axis which was tender uh, it was firm in consistency with irregular surface and borders uh, the inferior border was palpable distinctively but the upper border was not uh, however insinuation under the costal margin was possible the mobility was restricted and the mass was mo- moving with respiration in a cardio cranio caudal direction there was no hepatomegaly uh, no fluid thrill or shifting dullness a dull note was heard over the mass on percussion and rest of the abdomen was resonant a uh, normal bowel sounds were heard uh, uh, in the rest of the abdomen a perrectal examination had a foul smelling black tarry stools and uh, the rest of the findings were normal a per vaginal examination revealed a bile a blind ending vaginal vault and was normal a uh, left supraclavicular lymph node was not palpable uh, systemic examination the respiratory and cardiovascular system were uh, normal uh, with this uh, i would like to give a diagnosis of uh, carcinoma stomach but a differential diagnosis of uh, a mass arising from the left lobe of liver as well how will you explain all the symptoms that you have said till now uh, it is an epigastric mass sir uh, uh, the stomach no, no, being I... you have to explain the symptoms differential diagnosis means you have now completed symptoms and signs and giving a two diagnosis so it has to explain all the symptoms and signs yes, uh, in relation to your diagnosis uh carcinoma stomach is because uh, no, we are not i am not asking about that i am asking about the left lobe mass as a differential diagnosis uh, it was only on examination and anyway the... left lobe mass is not a differential diagnosis that's an anatomical description you know, on the examination there is uh, no finding uh, uh. uh. so you must give a specific diagnosis or leave it out what is meant by left lobe mass uh, because it was an epigastric mass uh, differential of left lobe of the uh, vinay uh, actually but see it, uh, it has to fit in with your symptoms and signs no that's yes. what is meant by differential diagnosis yes when after symptoms you brought in uh, ca body and after signs you brought in left lobe liver and these two are uh, near fatal mistakes actually okay <laughs> you, you can't substantiate either of them as a different diagnosis these are not usually brought in as a different diagnosis okay ca stomach what are the differential diagnosis epigastric dull mass percussion you got a dull mass what is trop space uh it is uh, uh, between the costal margin sir the angle between the costal margin that is called trough space and eh? between the costal two costal margin is that trough space is trough space below the costal margin or above the costal margin what is the content what is the shape i'm not exactly sure okay. it's a crescent shape hmm? yes sir it is the left border costal margin border it is a one border it is not below okay can it be a gist you can bring in here yes sir we can bring in just because of uh, not in that line i mean better but not going for a liver huh? okay and gl lymphoma gastric lymphoma yes sir what do you mean by gl lymphoma gastric lymphoma uh, arising from the uh, uh, any any criteria to say what is dawson criteria okay 
Dawson criteria for primary GI lymphoma. There are set, set criteria. Have you any heard of them? No, sir, not sure about it. What next? So you are not done any other test. Succession flash, you are not done. The size of the stomach, you are not marked whether to note whether it's a stomach is dilated or not. You are thinking in terms of a carcinoma stomach. Yes, sir. No, is the stomach is dilated? No, the stomach is not dilated. There is no succession flash. No, no. All that who will uh, mention that? So yes. Have you done that or? I have done that. Stomach is also not dilated, but you are not saying outer obstruction. How do you proceed further? Uh, I would like to investigate uh, uh, by blood investigations or uh, hem uh, hemogram uh, because of the melina, uh, ultrasound for abdomen. What, for what purpose? Uh, if you're thinking about sorry sir you said that clinically he is not paler yes sir and what what is the purpose of you go for doing the blood hemoglobin vinay uh, we yes, are, did, did, did you listen to the previous presentation yes sir yes sir and uh, what was uh, said by everybody always you have to confirm your diagnosis with the re relevant investigation that okay. should be your first investigation of choice. Yes. That is what Sar is asking. What are you going to do with your blood investigations? So effectively, when I it is diagnostic, then staging, then fitness for surgery. These are the three okay. ways. Once again, you're going back to hemogram and urea creatinine and XLHS. That's not the way. So okay. what are the what are the tests which are likely to confirm your diagnosis? Vinay, just a short thing. Vinay, Vinay you have yes, written uh, parietal exam. Examination first and pervaginal next. Use the same glove? No, sir. Change. Uh, which one will be first? Pervaginal or pervaginal first? Actually, pervaginal first. Ah, you may you make it that way. Okay. Yes. Now, please go ahead with Patas' uh, questions. One more mistake we are making is in a, even starting with examination, you are only putting the inspection. And what you are inspecting must also you should put. It is not just putting a local exam inspection. Are you going to examine the abdomen? Are you going to examine the chest? And what you are examining, you should always write. Okay, sir. Uh, uh, so okay, I would like ahead. to uh, I would like to uh, get an ultrasound of the abdomen to look for the uh, origin of the mass and the relations of the mass. Uh, if there is any uh, ascites present which was not uh, uh, seen in the examination. And any uh, uh, yeah, these three things basically. So you will not see the this. liver, node, nothing you will see. Yes, sir. Uh, the status of the liver metastasis and lymph nodes. You also. you have one. Uh, she is a lady. No? You said left lobe mass also. Yes. All those things. She's a lady. Have... You will not look into the ovary. You are looking to the. Uh... So either you start say complete. Don't say just three things and say that that's all. Okay. Go ahead. You have done an ultrasound. Then. Uh, uh, we can do a, a CT to confirm uh, the finding. Oh, and... oh, 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 oh. What is before CT? Uh, UGI what, is what scoping. Is very... Ah. Mm. Simple as that. Will it not give a good information? Uh, yes, you sir. Have a, you have a, your primary diagnosis, carcinoma stomach. Yes. Uh, I think earliest uh, you have to go and do a upper GSOP. You might be surprised in that. Do you have the ultrasound with you? Uh, no, sir. Actually, the unit had gotten a CT done directly. Okay, you go back to endoscopy. Uh, so the uh, endoscopy was showing a, dis uh, a circumferential ulcerated uh, fluff covering fibre lesion in the distal body, which was also involving the antrum, extending up to the pyloric opening with uh, significant luminal narrowing. The scope 
was not a, was not passed across the pyloric opening and a biopsy was taken which was reported as poorly cohesive carcinoma okay even the scope is not yes. able to be passed but the stomach is not dilated yes you are still maintaining that yes sir what the other name for this co cohesive carcinoma uh, not a very cell. commonly used terminology signet cell carcinoma mm. no what are the two major types of gastric carcinoma uh, intestinal and diffuse diffuse so which has a worse prognosis diffuse has a yeah uh, this cohesive is the diffuse type yes but you said is ulcerate you know Oh uh, yes, the circumference. Yeah, sir. yeah. Okay. What does the CT show? Uh, the CT is showing uh, uh, mural thickening of the stomach in the distal part uh, with loss of mural stratification. The fat planes have are being maintained uh, with the surrounding structures such as pancreas and gallbladder. There are uh, lymph nodes in the perigastric region and the peripancreatic region as well. no ascites has been seen and uh, there is no uh, dilation of the proximal stomach what about duodenal involvement uh, there is uh, no duodenal First, involvement can you see clearly uh, can you use your pointer and show which yeah. where is the no normal duodenum that's normal uh, no sir actually it is uh, narrowed up here uh, so because you could also not see it on endoscopy no this is yes. a limit yes it just looks more like a lanidis plastica type uh, stomach actually yes okay so what next um, next uh, we could do a, a metastatic work up because it is a diffuse uh, type of uh, carcinoma Uh, in the form of a pet ct okay what would like to uh, see pet ct was it done uh, yes sir, it was done uh, you would like to see uh, any other uh, uh, enhancing lesions in the liver or uh, the uh, Uh, any other distant metastases which we can find out right so what okay. next with this pet ct so this pet ct had uh, showed no evidence of any uh, distant metastases it was only a circumferential wall thickening with uh, multiple uh, lymph nodes in the perigastric and peripancreatic region right so uh, following this uh, we can do a diagnostic laparoscopy to find out uh, any peritoneal metastasis if uh, there is what you will do on a diagnostic laparoscopy uh, first we can find out if there are any visible uh, peritoneal metastasis and take a peritoneal wash and send it for cytology so that is also important no peritoneal cytology you have to take yes what is the what is your objective for doing that Uh, any micro metastasis which uh, uh, which is not visible uh, can be detected on the cytology so what uh, it will, will become an out? unoperable uh, uh, inoperable uh, situation sir no are you do, trying to do a diagnostic laparoscopy as a stand alone investigation or you have planned for something definitive and start with a diagnostic laparoscopy and proceed uh what is that you'll explain to this patient as to what or relate is what are you going to do now you have a patient like this with this pet ct and ct and biopsy and endoscopic findings what is that you're going to tell the patient the patient relatives as to what is your plan i mean in other words this what you're going to tell us also as to what you want to do i mean you have to continue speaking uh, yes sir um will what will you tell the patient what he has got i would tell he ha he has a uh, distal part of the stomach carcinoma which is uh, um 
because of the biopsy is possible diffuse in nature and uh, and because on examination the lump the mass is palpable it would be a uh, greater than t3 uh, lesion so we I would like to know t3. what i going to tell him no the see the patient's question will be uh, will you need be curative whatever you going to do on me what is that you going to do on me and uh, what is your plan in 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 you are telling the patient terms to him and his relatives uh, it would be a diagnostic uh, procedure than a curative procedure uh, as of now sir why, why do you say that isn't is will this not be curative there's no any distant metastasis is only lymph nodes so your stomach lymph nodes is a part of uh, you know uh, uh, do you think cure cure is not possible yes and obstructive yes. symptoms and uh, what big thing you are going to do just by diagnosis yes sir yeah, will you tell the patient curative may not be cure may not be possible right yes sir on on what basis and he will be very upset if you say that there is no cure and it, it, there's no any suggestion there's no lung or liver metastasis there's no ascites and there's only perigastric and peripancreatic lymph nodes and they know there 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 no distal uh, lymph nodes here yes then why do you say that cure is not possible no what is what is in your mind to say you you decided this whatever you going to do is palliative right yes sir why What is against uh, curative surgery? The size of the tumor, or the lymph nodes, or the location? So uh, the thickness of the uh, uh, how does thickness matter? It's only two point six. It's not that two. two it is not going to be any significantly say that it is not operable by just the thickness biopsy diffuse uh, the the diffuse type of carcinoma would be uh, that, that is only going to tell whether you are going to do a subtotal or total see the this pet ct does not suggest inoperability yes sir where, where is the evidence of inoperability inoperability say ct pet ct together there is no forget the diagnostic laparoscopy as it stands now yes there is is there anything suggesting that we cannot uh, do a curative resection no sir we can actually go for a curative resection then why are you changing your uh, what will you tell the patient will you not tell the patient that i am going to attempt you yes sir so we have to tell the patient but then he'll also tell him that it may be possible that when i put a laparoscope there may be some deposits i might do a peritoneal wash or you know if there is some surface lesions then you know actually if there are also surface lesions is there still possible to do uh, some radical surgery in cs stomach even if there are some metal deposits uh, yes sir we can uh, go for a radical surgery gastrectomy with the lymph node uh, dissection and the uh, omentectomy also with with you are suspecting now t3 tumors or the stage 3 uh, will you straight away you think of a surgery first or you go for a new adjuvant and then go for a surgery it would be new adjuvant followed by surgery so there are so many options are in front of you So you can't say that it is only a palliative. Yes. So now a curative intent is there. Again, if you see the lymph nodes are not very big, the lymph nodal volume doesn't seem to be very high. Yes. You know, he can is a candidate can be considered for a curative gastrectomy. For example, if you have to do a gastrectomy, what gastrectomy will you do in him? We are subtotal gastrectomy. I will say. Total gas at me. What are your points at me? Mm. The uh, proximal part of the stomach is not involved. So, and, uh, what, the, should be, what should be the 
proximal uh, free stomach that should be available to avoid total okay. Five centimeters of proximal muscle. Right. So how will you know that on table? Okay. We can send for a frozen section. Right. So what about the distal transaction? Distal transaction, if uh, it is not in, uh, if it's not uh, beyond the duodenum, we can do a total gastrectomy. Whereas if it if the distal margin is in the duodenum, the first part of the duodenum or second part, we have to go for a uvicles resection. Now, uh, what what will the to what extent do you go? Can you go on to duodenum technically? What centimeters? Two to three centimeters. Yeah, so you can only go up to two to five centimeter and have a clear insertion. Yes. Right. So, uh, and then if somebody asks you what what is the level of lymph nodes you'd like to dis uh, dissect here, or uh, uh, what, how will you, uh, what is the terminology for your uh, gastrectomy? Uh, C2 lymphadenectomy, sir, along with the gastrectomy. Which includes the perigastric and the uh, lymph nodes along the vasculature. What all uh, so, uh, constitute uh, due to gastrectomy? Uh, it includes uh, station 1 to 12. Sir. What should be the minimum number of lymph nodes that should be removed? 15 should be removed. Minimum. So you will remove the spleen also then? Uh, if you no, are sir, taking sir, the entire nodes, you said. Uh, sorry, sir, I didn't listen. No, no, if you are taking all the nodes, that means level 10 nodes also you are taking. It is in the hilum of the spleen. So you have to take the spleen also. Uh, no, sir, it's only uh, if it's not involved in the spleen, it, we can do a spleen sparing uh, uh, lymph node dissection. So will you remove the level 10 node? Uh, yes, sir. I, we have to remove the level. No. So, can you say in one word what is the treatment you are giving? Full treatment uh, or surgery? Uh, what do you? Uh, it will be a. a Subtotal gastrectomy with a D2 uh, lymph node dissection. And if the margins are uh, negative, it would be an R0 dissection. So you are only going to do the gastrectomy? Is it complete? You don't make a connection? Uh, you you make full, full, full. The, you should give the answer in full. Uh, Along with the uh, ruin by uh, reconstruction. So, why do you want to prefer ruin by not gastrogenesis? Uh, ruin by has advantages of uh, uh, it has the. Uh, No, it's objective of doing a ruin and sir. No, why is ruin and why considered when you do an anismosis stomach to the small bowel? What is the fundamental behind ruin and why? Uh, the reflux, uh, biliary reflux uh, will be prevented in ruin and why. Mm. Okay. So what is the advantage of that? Uh, uh, the recurrent uh, stomal ulcerations and recurrence could be uh, prevented. It is not the recurrence. How does the recurrence? How is recurrence prevented by uh, diverting by not recurrence? It's regarding the anastomosis. Only. Uh, Prevention of uh, stomal ulceration. Uh, 
I think we have reached uh, 10 o'clock uh, on Professor AK to comment on uh, what are the negatives and what are the positives in the nice presentation, sir. And sum up. Yeah. <laughs> the most difficult job you are giving me every time. <laughs> <laughs> but to the right. But to the other for all of us, sir. So you need a seasoned exam. You are my examiner in MS, sir. MS. So to the right, right person, sir. You are my examiner in standing, sir. So. Uh, the thing is, in this case, one thing which worries me is that we are not sure of the status of the duodenum because the pictures provided on CT, I am not certain whether the extent on the duodenal side is resectable or not. That's one. Therefore, when you are not sure, because the thing which is most important in gastric resection is, if you get R1 or R2 by this thing, that adversely affects the prognosis very much. So you have to be sure if you are doing a radical surgery that you will get an R0 margin. So personally, I feel that we should, in this case, where there's a question of duodenal involvement, of neither endoscopic nor CT, we are sure, infiltrative type of carcinoma, there may be a role for giving, starting neoadjuvant, doing surgery and continuing it in the post-operative period in the form of the most common use regime is ECF, epirubicin, cisplatin and 5 fluoroviruses. So that also increases uh, to a large extent your chances of getting R0 resection. That's one. Secondly, the, although D2 is widely done, all the trials that have been done, the original Dutch trial, the magic trial, the Italian trial and all that outside of Korea and uh, Japan have shown superiority of D2 only if spleen and pancreas are preserved. So if you have to do a spidectomy for clearing lymph node uh, 10 and you require a pancreatectomy because of duodenal involvement and you can't do a pancreas preserving duodenal resection, then the, there is no advantage. Particularly if you are operating without neoadjuvant treatment. So, personally, if I were treating this patient, I would strongly consider considering the extent, the fact that it is a poorly cohesive, diffuse type of carcinoma known to be biologically active, to give a neoadjuvant and then review after three months and then go ahead with the research. So, I feel that uh, probably it's a safer option. And the advantage of doing a diagnostic lab beforehand, and nowadays there is a procedure called large volume paracentesis, where you insert a large amount of fluid, wash the peritoneum, and if you demonstrate thing, it signal, signal most adverse uh, prognostic factor is to recover malignant cells in the peritoneum. And therefore, after that, without any new adjuvant treatment, primary surgery will be doomed to fail. So I think we should do that in this case, where it is known that the whole thickness of the stomach is involved. And there is also an endoscopic picture which looks rather as if the it is extended sub uh, if not trans -zerosely. So, if I were you, I would uh, can think of that as the primary option. Otherwise, very nice presentation, difficult case. And uh, don't bring in uh, issues like which are not uh, relevant based on history, like body of pancreas and left lobe of liver and all that, just to complete a differential diagnosis. Because that uh, is uh, that's acceptable, unacceptable at the postgraduate level. Yeah. See, uh, and not, not knowing the boundaries of drop space is not at all good. Because... Uh, that's a very important uh, percussion sign finding, particularly in carcinoma stomach, particularly when one of your differential diagnosis is left lobe enlargement. So there's no excuse for not being able to tell uh, boundaries of trough space. Yeah. See, uh, today both the candidates have been very rigid with their diagnosis. Uh, I mean, uh, you stick from the very beginning, you start off with a note of malignancy and then you beat around. And as Professor AK said, to have a different diagnosis of left lobe and uh, uh, head, uh, body pancreas are not uh, pardonable ones. 
Uh, you should have a, you should be more flexible. You should have a variety of different diagnoses, uh, which you have to enumerate and uh, say points for and points against all the time. You all have to keep speaking. Actually, both of you have been yeah. very, very silent. You know, you have to continue speaking and, you know, then you shouldn't give any room to any examiner to ask you anything in between. And second thing I noticed with you, Vinay, is that you be very pessimistic when talking to the patient. You, you from the beginning, you you were thinking of something palliative, and I'm and you know there's nothing which really strongly suggests uh, palliation in this patient. You should be a lot more progressive. You should give the various options. You will say that it's likely that he can be cured, but it's also likely that during laparoscopy may find something, and then we might uh, go slow, or then you know, may I also say that. I'll just go laparoscopy and stop there and then may consider for uh, new adjuvant and so on. It should be it should be much open and you just keep talking. Only when you talk that the examiners understand you know something rather than asking questions and getting answers all the while. So yeah. I think both of you should be a lot more communicative. Yes. You have not said whether I have passed in my summary or not. <laughs> Sir, you you passed. <laughs> All of us over the only, only because of you, all of us are here. Sir. Yeah, really. So, I don't know about, about others, but it's true as far as I'm concerned. So. Your description okay. was excellent, sir. I think that is more accurate. You, than you have to give the appearance of being confident and knowledgeable. That's much more important. And uh, waiting for questions is not a good uh, policy. Keep talking. If there is a doubt, they will stop you to ask. Yes. Here, because you have the PET scan, you have the CT, so you are very sure about your diagnosis, you are trying to stick on to that. The examination, it is not like that. You are going to see the case afresh. So that mindset of the thinking it in the open mind, talking accordingly to that should be developed. Yes. It's very difficult once you know the diagnosis to talk in the examination. Because anything, whatever we presume outside, then you think it is wrong. So have a open can you mind. Just one minute, Vinay. Can you show that last uh, laparoscopic picture? Yeah. See near as you approach the outlet. What do you see? The stomach. What do you see there on the under surface of the liver? Uh, it is a serosal involvement, sir. Yeah. Cirrhosal involvement of the stomach and the under surface of the liver. Just uh, showed that view. Uh, yes. Uh, Perihepatic liver, uh, periportal lymph node. Mm. And there's some peritoneal deposits look like. Peritoneal deposits. So, when you take uh, consent, you must tell this uh, patient that uh, attempted cure is what is the intent. A diagnostic lab is going to establish whether it is possible or not. There is a possibility that you may not complete the procedure and you may require after that additional treatment before we can re explore. Yes. Because if you assure him radical operation and then don't do it, it will create a lot of unhappiness. Yes. See, this one is spread far beyond the cirrhosis. <laughs> And therefore, the question of doing curative resection at any point of time is very doubtful. There, there are a lot of peritoneal deposits here. <coughs> yeah. So, and also cirrhosal involvement is definitely T4A, if not T4B, because the momentum is all caked around the greater curvature. <laughs> Be cautious, but at the same time, don't be interrupted in your presentation. Be continuous. Yes, sir. It's a tough case. So, anyway, it doesn't matter. Well done. Thank you. All the, all the best, Vinay. Thank you. We are done. Sorry, Kalang, we have... Uh, sir, we have with you. We have with you. Um, Sorry to have extended to your time. Um, should we give the opportunity to the student to ask any doubts or clarifications, sir? Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. sure.
Gautam, uh, Vinay, any of you since, would like to clarify? Since, since, they, since they made me undo the summary, yes, I am sir. going to assign the chance uh, topic uh, of answering the questions to Patta. Okay, okay, okay. I think uh, they don't seem to have a question. I may take uh, it uh, that way. Sir, Dr. I Vinay. have a question. Please ask. Uh, sir, about the difference in diagnosis, uh, in, uh, in my case, there was mostly suggestion. Can you have your video switched on, Dr. Vinay? Thanks. Uh, Please go ahead. Uh, in the differential diagnosis after history, we have mostly only a diagnosis of carcinoma stomach. So, can we give only one or uh, multiple? The is to be differential given? diagnosis is not always possible in every case. When the presentation is typical and the findings are typical, like if you have a woman coming with a four quadrant tumor of the breast ulcerating, what is the differential diagnosis? Is it not? Yes. So it's not necessary that in every case that you have to have a differential diagnosis. But if there are some symptoms and signs which do not fit with your primary diagnosis, also fit with some other possibility, then you mention. Like that previous case we discussed, I don't know whether you are hearing or that or not, of a carcinoma uh, of the right colon. Yes. The possibility of just for my nose day, because there was frank bleeding in the thing, and usually these tumors, adenocarcinomas, don't bleed like that in the right colon. But yes. in your case, the all the symptoms of of upper elementary tract. No significant pain radiating or in the back or postural relation. So where is the question of bringing in uh, body of the pancreas? Uh, 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 where is the question of bringing in the left lobe of the liver, which will not explain even one of the symptoms? Yes. So you could have considered just as sir. Just as possible. Just as possible, you should have said when we say differential, it doesn't only mean different organs, but different diagnosis, pathology of the same organ also. Okay. Uh, Vinay, are you clear? Yes, sir. Yes. We're talking about luminal pathology, you can talk about uh, estral luminal or something on the wall. So that kind of differential diagnosis, don't give uh, one extreme, two extremes of diagnosis, don't give. On just a small benign and then go for advanced malignancy. It's better within that system what the best possibility you can think. Yes, sir. Any other doubts? That's all. How do you feel you have done? What is your own assessment? Uh, I've made a mistake in the differential diagnosis and uh, might be not fluent enough. And management, were you fluent enough? Uh, the only thing is because I had known the uh, the workup of the patient, I was biased towards one type of management. I think there's a very honest admission. <laughs> Actually, that's what happens most of the time. That is what we tell everybody not to see the cases before the examination. Because then you have the advantage of the workup and the findings which the examiner doesn't have. Yes. And therefore, if you discuss based on that, you'll obviously be found out that you know about the patient. They're not very easy to put the examiners. More than the answer, the method of your examination is more important. Very good. Yes. Like what Patta said, you know, it must flow. It should not stop. There should be no hesitation. He was very fluent when he asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I see both the boys, especially Pina is very slow and very, you know, we always think that somebody is very slow means somebody is not very sure of what is happening. You know, the, the, the continuity of speaking. They will learn. Good language, good volume. This is the most important thing. That itself will make you uh, uh, closer to the past, actually. The conversation, Alex. Can I will? Yes, sir. I think we'll call a day. 
thank you uh, anand sir thank you radha sir thank you rajavelu sir i think uh, jailal sir karnakaran sir and uh, we have dr ajay sahai and uh, dr karnakaran staying with us um, with the permission of the faculty we call this session a close for the day and we look forward for the next friday class thank you very much thank you all